So let's suppose we get into a car and we drive for three days. Let's suppose during day one we drive 600 kilometers east along the x-axis. During day two we drive 320 kilometers southeast at an angle of 45 degrees with respect to our x-axis. And finally, during the final day three, we drive 100 kilometers southwest at an angle of 50 degrees with respect to our x-axis. So, let's begin by drawing our diagram. Here we have our reference frame, the x-y plane. So let's suppose our vector 1 is given by v1, our vector 2 is given by v2, and our vector 3 is given by v3. So during day 1, we drive 600 kilometers east to the right along our x-axis. Then we make a 45 degree turn. So this angle is 45 degrees and we drive this way for 320 kilometers and finally we make a 50 degree turn with respect to our x-axis so we turn this way and we drive for 100 more kilometers we want to find what the final displacement is from the point of origin our initial position to the final position after the third day. So we want to find our magnitude as well as our direction of our displacement resultant vector. So V subscript R. Now, we're essentially adding up all these vectors and we're finding what the resultant vector is. So, in step one, we want to find what the Vx is and what the vy is. So we're essentially looking at each individual vector, we're finding our vx, we're finding our vy's, we're going to add them up, and then in part b, we're going to use our formula to find what the magnitude is of our final resultant vector. In part C, we're going to find our direction or also we're going to find this angle which will tell us our direction. So, let's go to part A. So, during day one, we have the following xy axis. We drive strictly along the x-axis. We don't drive up and we don't drive down. That means our y component vector for vector 1 is 0. And since we only drive in one direction along the x-axis, that means our vector 1 is equal to the magnitude and direction is equal to 600 kilometers, which is equal to our component along the x direction of vector 1, given by v subscript x1. What about during day 2? So we're looking at this vector here, and we're taking it and shifting it to our origin as shown here. So the degree measure as given here is 45 degrees. So we want to find the x component and the y components of vector 2. So our x component vector 2 is given by cosine. So we have cosine which is adjacent over our hypotenuse. Uh, and we rearrange our equation and we get our V subscript X2 is equal to cosine of the angle 45 multiplied by the magnitude of our hypotenuse, which is 320. So that gives us 226. Now, likewise, in order to find our Y component, we use sine. Sine of the angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So we rearrange our equation, our trig equation, and we get our Y component of vector 2 is equal to negative. Why negative? Well, because we choose the up direction to be positive and the bottom direction going downward is negative, to be negative. So we get negative sine of the angle 45 multiplied by 320 and we get negative 226. So these are identical but have different signs because cosine 45 is equal to sine 45. Now, let's look at our final vector. So we take this final vector and shift it to our origin position. So we have an angle of 50 
with respect to our x-axis. So once again, we want to find the x-component vector and the y-component vector. The x, once again, is given by the following equation. So, we have uh, negative because going this way to the left, along the x-axis is negative, going this way to the right along the x-axis is positive. So since we're moving this way, our component along the x-direction is negative. So we have negative cosine y. Well, because cosine of the angle is equal to our adjacent side divided by our hypotenuse. So we know what the angle is. We know what the hypotenuse is. So we use that to find our x and we get negative cosine 50 multiplied by 100 gives us approximately negative 64. What about our final y component vector? Well, once again, we're going downward, so we'll have a negative in front of our magnitude. Sine 50 times 100 gives us approximately negative 77 kilometers. So now we find the Vx and we find the Vy. So 600 plus 226 minus 64 gives us our final magnitude along the x direction of our resultant vector. Adding up 0, negative 226, and negative 74 gives us our a component along the y direction of our resultant vector. Now we go to part b to find the magnitude of our resultant vector. We use the following equation. The absolute value or the magnitude of our resultant vector is equal to the radical of vx uh, our x component vector squared plus our y component vector squared and so we add them up and we get 762 for our x and negative 303 for our y. So we take the radical of that after we take the sum and the squares and we get approximately 820 kilometers. So the magnitude of this purple vector, resulting vector, is 820 kilometers. What about our direction? To find the direction, we have to find this angle. To find this angle, we use our formula. So tangent of the angle theta is equal to our component along the y direction divided by our component along the x direction. So we found these two guys in part A. And so our top is negative 303, our bottom is positive 762. So we take the ratio and take the negative of that, and now we get this value. But this is not the end. We have to find the angle. So we take the inverse of tangent function and we get, so the inverse of the tangent function, we plug this guy in and we find our angle to be negative 21.7. So notice on our reference frame on the xy plane, the counterclockwise direction is positive, so going this way is positive. The clockwise direction is negative. So that means since we're going this way, this way means negative, so that means the negative is pointing downward, which is exactly what we see. Our resultant points downward below our x-axis and has a value of 21.7 degrees, approximately 21.7 degrees.